as a more mathematical and precise way of describing the symmetry operations of a geometric shape, which we're going to use to represent a chemical compound, it is often helpful to think merely of the vertices of the figure, because if the symmetry operation moves the vertices, as we expect, then all the sides that are connected by those vertices will move as well. So that means instead of having to think about an infinite number of points, we only need to think about a handful of points. So for example, we can refer to one of the generic vertices, this as the ordered pair xy. And what we're interested in is how the symmetry operation moves that point to some other point. And we'll call the transform point, kind of the new the destination, x prime, y prime. So but essentially what we're thinking about is that x, the x coordinate is going to go to a new coordinate, x prime, and y is going to go to a new point, new coordinate, y prime. Uh, for the time being, we're looking at this in two dimension, so-called Riemann two space, but it, soon enough, we'll be able to uh, extend it into three dimensions. For the symmetry operations that we're talking about, we'd like to have a concise mathematical way of describing these transformations, particularly being able to transform all the coordinates of the point at one time. And it turns out that the mathematical object, which is most useful for doing this, is an object called a matrix. So a two by two matrix, we'll write a generic two by two matrix like this. So A, B, C, and D will be numbers. And for our cases, they will be real numbers. Um, but in uh, mathematics in general, it's possible to have complex numbers as well. So uh, one phrase which we'll use over and over again, which will help us using matrices will be our mantra, a phrase that we're going to repeat over and over again. And this particular phrase is rows times columns. So with a matrix, we're interested in how many rows and how many columns. And we'll see that this rows times columns will also be helpful when we do a mathematical operation called matrix multiplication. So in the case of this matrix here, this is a two by two matrix because it has two rows and two columns. The two rows are, well, the first row is going to be A, B. The second row is C, T. The first column is A, C. And the second column is B, D. Part of the reason why matrices are so useful is that um, we can use them to write in a condensed form a series of equations. So the types of equations that we're most likely going to want to write are as follows. So we've noticed that this particular matrix here is a two by two matrix because it has two rows times two columns. And we will often represent, when we're talking about two dimensional space, we will refer to the point as a matrix that looks like this. So instead of writing it as an ordered pair that's horizontal, we're gonna write it as a vertical or a so-called column matrix. So in this particular case, since we have two rows, the first row is X, the second row is Y, and one column, we refer to this as a two by one matrix. So a way of thinking about the operator, so this is our representation of the symmetry operator, perhaps a rotation or a, um, a mirror plane acting on a point, and it's going to give us a new point. So we're interested how it gives us maybe different, maybe not different, coordinates x prime, y prime. So we're going from the point x, y to the point x prime, y prime. And so we want to see how we achieve that using the matrix. Now the matrix multiplication has a series of rules which seem very strange, but can be learned relatively quickly and that's what we'll show here. So the key idea in matrix multiplication is this idea of rows times columns. So we notice, for example, that the first row of our matrix is this AB. So we have two different numbers. The first number is A, 
the second number is b. And we're going to multiply it times a column here. And the column is going to be x and y. And we notice that we have two numbers in the first row and two numbers in this column. And those numbers have to be the same. If we have different numbers, uh, uh, different number of numbers in the row and the column, matrix multiplication is not even possible. So what's going to happen here is I multiply the first row times the first column, and I do it item by item. So I multiply A, so that's our character there, times the number in the first position there, which is X. So I have AX. Then I want to multiply B, the second number in the first row, times Y, which is the second number in the first column. So that's going to give me B times Y. And these two particular entries, the AX and the BY, are added together. So it's part of the matrix multiplication. We multiply term by term and add those sums together. So this is going to be a number, and eventually what's going to be a matrix, a two by one matrix. And the first entry is the number AX plus BY. Our second entry, we get by noticing that the second row is CD here. So we're going to multiply the second row, CD, times the first column, which is XY. So we do that term by term, and I see that my C multiplies times X. I notice that D multiplies Y. And then those two terms are also added together. So the product of the matrix A, B, C, D times the matrix X, Y is going to be a matrix, a two by one matrix. The first term, the first row, first column position is going to be A, X plus B, Y. And then the second term in the second row, first column position is going to be C, X plus D, Y. Now it takes a little bit of practice to get used to this somewhat strange way of multiplying matrices, but we're going to see that this style of multiplication is a becomes second nature pretty quickly, and it allows us to write the symmetry operation as either a two by two or a three by three matrix. So let's look at some special cases of some special matrices uh, that correspond to symmetry operations that we've already discussed. So the simplest of these matrices consists entirely of zeros and ones. So let me write this as a, so we have the matrix one, zero, zero, one. So we notice that we only have ones and zeros and along the so-called diagonal, we have ones and then there's zeros in the other positions. And this particular matrix is going to multiply the point x, y. So we're just being generic, writing about any particular point, we're just going to call it x, y. And we want to see what happens when we do this multiplication. Where is it going to send this point x, y, which can be an arbitrary point. So let's notice that by our rules of matrix multiplication, we have our first row times our first column. So our first row is going to be a 1, and it's going to be multiplied times x. So 1 times x. My other multiplication will consist of 0 times y. So let's write that down. So 0 times y. And remember that when we do all those particular multiplications of a row times a column, we add those two terms together. So I have 1 times x plus 0 times y. For my second multiplication, I notice that the second row of my matrix is 0, 1. So this is the second row. Here's the first column. I'm going to multiply 0 times x plus 1 times y. So let me just write that down. So we have 0. I know I'm going to need that later on, so I'm going to write that. 0 times x plus 1 times y. And then these two terms are going to be added together. And this is all going to be one matrix. And I notice that this particular set of symbols I can condense 
and simplify. 1 times x is this x, plus 0 times y is going to be 0, so that's 0. So my first term is just going to be an x. For the second row, I have 0 times x, which is 0, plus 1 times y is y. So I'm left with the 2 by 1 matrix x, y. So when you notice something here, is that no matter what point I start with has the coordinates x, y, this particular symmetry operation is going to convert x, y to x, y, which means it doesn't change at all. So I notice through this that 1, 0, 0, 1 is a matrix representation of the E identity symmetry operation. So this particular matrix acts just like the number 1 does in ordinary multiplication. So that's an interesting uh, matrix. That's, that's important to recognize right away, how it acts. So that's the first matrix that we need. That's the identity matrix. So we have any other interesting matrices that have interesting effects. Well, one that I can look at again, if I replace the ones with minus ones, So I have a matrix that looks very much like the identity matrix, but now I have minus ones instead of positive ones. Let's see what we get when we multiply this matrix times the point x, y. So I notice I'm going to have minus 1 times x zero times y. And then those two terms, of course, are added together. So notice that the first row times the first column gives me the term that's in the first row, first column. Here we have the second row times the first column. And then the product of these two columns, of the row and the column, is going to give me the term at the second row, first column. So this is going to involve 0 times x plus minus 1 times y. And they're added together. So this is going to give you a matrix that has the following form once we simplify it. Minus 1 times x gives me minus x plus 0 times y gives us 0. For the second term, 0 times x is 0, plus minus 1 times y gives me minus y. So this is going to transform the point x, y into the point minus x, minus y. And while it may not be obvious in two dimensions, if we do the same operation in three dimensions, we notice that this is the matrix representation of the i inversion operation. So the matrix for the inversion looks very much like the matrix for the identity operation, except that it has minus ones along the diagonal instead of positive ones. And it's nice because since it has a large number of zeros, uh, it makes the matrix multiplication somewhat easier to follow than in the case of more complicated matrices. Do we have more complicated matrices than these that are involved in symmetry operations? Yes. Another useful matrix that we can do in two dimensions has a minus one for the first term and then a positive one in the second row. And we want to see what is the effect of this matrix when it acts on this generic point x, y, and then we're going to interpret that effect in terms of a symmetry operation that we've already investigated. So if we do this operation here, we see that we get minus 1. So our first row is minus 1, 0. So minus 1 times x plus 0 times y and then we add those together. So that is a term, since we're multiplying the first row times the first column, it gives us the character that's going to be in the first row, first column. Our second row is 0, 1, 
and our first column is xy. And we're going to multiply those together to get the mathematical expression that's going to be in the second row, first column. So we have 0 times x, and then plus 1 times y. So 0 times x, there's the x. 1 times y, there we y. And since those terms are added together, we need a plus sign here. And now we want to see what is the overall uh, effect by simplifying this expression. And we notice that if we do that, we have minus 1 times x gives us minus x, plus 0 is 0. And then we have 0 times x plus 1 times y. So this has transformed the point xy into the point minus xy. Now this may not be obvious what is going on in this particular situation, but let me draw a picture to kind of show this. Let's assume that we have a point, our original point is going to be xy. So we notice that the new point, the transformed point, minus xy, has the same y-coordinate. Since it has the y, same y-coordinate, it's going to be at the same level above the x-axis. This is going to have the same y-coordinate, so say about there. But its x-coordinate is going to be, for as much as x is positive in this direction, it's going to go in the negative direction. So we're going to have a point minus x. So what we notice here is the effect is as if we have a mirror, a mirror right here that reflects this particular point over to this point over here. So this would be a mirror along the y-axis. So this would be a yz mirror. So that would be the yz mirror. And one way we can recognize, so we can recognize mirror plane matrices because we're going to notice along the diagonal, we're going to have exactly 1 minus 1, and the rest of the terms will be a positive 1. And the location of the minus 1 will tell us quite a bit, because we'll recognize later on that when we have a matrix uh, 2 by 2, that the first column and first row refers to the x position, the second row and second column refers to the y position. So we can think of this term as applying to x, this term as applying to y. So we see that whenever we have a positive 1, that tells us that the term doesn't change. So y turns into positive y, no effect. So 1 is sort of a no effect. A minus 1 means that we've reflected it. So um, it tells us that we're having a reflection <clears throat> uh, with regard to x. So x is a coordinate that changes. And if we look at the description of the mirror plane, we call it sigma yz. y and z don't change. So y and z have no effect. So anything that has an x coordinate will change. So just by looking at this sigma yz, we will be able to eventually write down the matrix for this particular mirror plane, just noticing that y and z don't change. So those will be a positive one when we get to three dimensions. But the x coordinate, which isn't listed, is the coordinate has a minus 1. Positive 1 when we get to three dimensions, but the x-coordinate, which isn't listed, is the coordinate has a minus 1. 